I firmly believe that you cannot fail when it comes to YouTube. I might be a little bit biased. As an extreme introvert, I can honestly say that even if I never really saw success in my channel, just the process of making video after video has completely transformed like so many different areas of my life. From like my actual personality, to how I feel about myself, to my friend groups, my hobbies, even how I sleep. I would even say my happiness levels, like so many positive things have come out of the process of making videos for YouTube. The first like year I was making videos, I learned so much about myself. There was a point for like six months where every time I uploaded a video, I would lose subscribers when people were reminded that I existed. And as someone who used to be super self centered and really care about what other people think about them. That was really hard for me to be like, get rejected week after week after week by people literally unsubscribing every time I post. I never wanted to be a YouTuber when I was a kid. I don't have home videos that I made. I never wanted to be an actor. I never wanted to be in front of people. I wanted to have like a normal life, be a normal person in a normal job. And I never really expected to enjoy what I do every day and fall in love with the process of making videos, not only the, the outcome of the videos, but what it does to me. When I first started YouTube, I was like so incredibly bad. First day of filming. Uh... I used to be and probably still am like the most quiet person you will ever meet when people see me in person. That's like, what I'm known for is not talking. It's like after I shoot a video, I've used up all my words for like, a, a day or two and I like don't talk to anybody. I have to like go be alone, go for a walk, play a game, like do something to decompress because it's super draining for me. And yet I love it, which is so weird. Cause like I used to be the most insecure person out there. Like I never had pictures of me as a kid. I was always worried about what I was dressed like, how my hair was, like I was super worried about what other people thought of me. And now I don't really care that much and that's come by practice. In fact, I, I'm trying to show more of my real self. Like if something's messed up, I'll, I'll leave it in. If I stutter, like let, let's keep some of them. I make a mistake in my life, let's use it as an example to help other people instead of trying to hide it so people you know, don't realize that I, I screw up a lot. And I think that happened for me by putting all this time into like editing a video. Like I used to put 10 to 20 hours into editing one video and I'm trying to make every little thing perfect and it's the imperfections that people actually like because that's a real person and you're trying to present this best version of yourself but when you realize that that's not the real you and to make actual human connections with people you have to show that more vulnerable goofy weird stuttering side of yourself it was like this really freeing liberating uh, process for me to realize that people are okay with me being me and I don't have to you know present a perfect version of myself. I just have to be me. That came from YouTube, but it translated into my personal life and my friends and everything. It was great. I always felt like I was kind of artistic. I wanted to be an artist, but my drawing is horrible. My painting is so bad. I took an art class in like high school and it was like, I was literally the worst person there by a long shot. But I had that desire to make stuff as a kid and it just kind of died in my teens and my twenties because I, I never found anything I was good at like that was an art form. And I just leaned into working and working and working. And like throughout that time period, I pretty much had zero friends. I just focused on like work and a few obsessions. I did meet my wife and got married, but it was pretty much just work and nothing else. And I wasn't really passionate about most of my life. And the one thing I was excited about was like finance and you know, weird nerdy topics like that, that nobody I knew was really into. So that's why I originally started to make videos because I was like obsessed about these topics that I didn't know anybody else who was obsessed about. But then I started to share them with the world and I found other people who are obsessed about the same weird stuff that I was like, like most people I know don't know what a house hack is. And yet it's completely changed my life. And tons of people know about that now or minimalism like, oh, is that like a, a design type? It's like, no, it's a, it's a way of life. But I've been able to find friends and people who are into the same stuff as me all online we read the same books a lot of you guys were like we're, we're so similar and I would never have found all of you if I hadn't put myself out there and shared the things that excited me the most even though I didn't know who it was going to I was just posting it because I was so excited and just had nobody to share it with and I was able to do all that because I got over the hurdle of being embarrassed like if you look at my first video I didn't know how to edit I put the camera on auto. The thumbnail was like a screenshot of the video because I didn't know what a thumbnail was. Zero experience. It was just myself watching myself and like friends and family. And I'm just so thankful that I didn't get stuck there and I just pushed publish on that first one. It wasn't perfect, but it was done. It took me like 
months to actually start trying to improve on YouTube and actually getting better. But I remember when I made the first video that ever actually did well and kind of uh, went viral. During the process of making that video was some of the most excited like I've ever been in my life. I was so passionate about making something that was cool and i was so proud of the fact that like i made something that's actually cool which i'd never done before it was this art passion that i've had as a kid and i was able to actually transform it into building something and, and that's what i'm actually good at is making videos and finding creative ways to do stuff it was like that switch of something that i'd been you know looking for my whole life this creative outlet, this passion to do something I loved. And even though my skills were still horrible at the time, I'd finally done something that was just for me. I wasn't making any money. It was just because I was passionate about the stuff I was talking about and I could present it in a way that was cool. It was exciting. It was fun. It became an obsession. Like the only thing I've been excited about besides all the topics that I'm excited about is like making YouTube videos for the past like five years now. I almost am disappointed when the weekends come around because that means I can't work on my videos. And and as a kid who never knew what they wanted to do their entire lives, I still don't know what I would do if I didn't you know, do YouTube. I just couldn't be more grateful. And like looking back at all the circumstances, it was definitely from God. I feel like I found the thing that I'm supposed to do. Every other job that I've had and side hustle that I've started, I've just never felt like this, this connection or excitement or been proud of myself until YouTube. And this was all before like I ever made a dollar. YouTube did lead to a, a bunch of other opportunities before I started to actually make money from YouTube to make money. But before those even, it was like this mental aspect of being proud of yourself, of having an outlet to talk, of seeing yourself on video and realizing when you're fake, when you're real because you're editing yourself and you're like, I seem so fake there. Is that how I actually am? Am I, am I being fake to people to try to present myself better? I was even talking to like some family members about this recently and they've realized this change in me of I'm actually confident now. I'm okay talking in front of people. I can hold the conversation better. My demeanor changes, like so many different things change when you build confidence by doing things that you're proud of. By realizing that sitting in a room, talking to a camera in front of thousands of people or even 20 people is way harder than thousands i think because it's like your friends and family that's what bravery is it's when you're scared you do it anyways if you weren't scared it wouldn't be brave so by doing hard things over and over and over again you prove to yourself that you can do stuff at least that's what happened for me i feel like it also forced me to grow a lot because when you run out of ideas you read a book and then another book and then another book and then another book and then another book then another book trying to get ideas and you do challenges you work on new habit all to try to be a better person so that you can share how you're becoming that better person at least that's what i do or you know if you do guitar or whatever you do on youtube it forces you to grow on that otherwise you know at some point you're going to run out of stuff to talk about so you have to grow as a person it forces you to grow like when i started i could never imagine that i'd be creating a course to help other people run YouTube channels. Like I've gotten to the point where I'm able to run my channel if I do one video a week on like five hours a week, still make really good videos, be able to make a decent amount of money without it taking over my life and without me hating what I'm doing or spending all my time doing it. So that's why I created uh, this course that I've been working on for like the past six months called the five hour YouTuber. I don't want this video to turn into like a whole spiel about it, but I'm pretty much going to be teaching like a live cohort, getting super engaged with a bunch of people because I think this has completely changed my life and I want more people to be successful at this, to do it, to love it, to not go through all the stupid stuff that I've gone through and to just be successful at it sooner. So enrollment's open for a couple weeks. If you wanna check it out, you're welcome to. If not, totally cool, but I'm super excited about that. So even before I made really any money from YouTube, putting myself out there created so many possibilities for me and actually earn me money in other ways before ever making it from YouTube. And that was by companies seeing the work I was creating and offering to pay me to make ads for them, to host a show for them. Just so many financial money-making opportunities come out of putting yourself out there and showing that you can do stuff. After like a year or two of putting myself out there every week, I was able to land a job working for a company and that earned me as much as I was making at my full-time job for just like a, a week or two's worth of work, which is absolutely crazy. And I've seen so many other small creators who start creating content for brands, reviewing things, getting photography gigs. I actually got a lot of those through YouTube. So many opportunities just come from putting yourself out there. One of the best ways to get started making money with YouTube that I still do is reviewing products for companies. Why I say nobody can lose at YouTube is because you gain valuable skills. One of them is like how to make good videos. How a lot of smaller creators start making money is companies will send them a product like Sonabox sent me this ice plunge and that sauna and all I have to do is make a video for them to use on their own social media and then I get like an affiliate link where I can earn commission on these as well. Plus I get a couple hundred dollars worth of free products that I use that I was gonna get anyways. This is gonna suck. 
Oh, that's cold. That is cold. So I'm a firm believer that the skills you you uh, learn from YouTube, wow, I can't think, are some of the most valuable skills that there are. There's marketing, video production, other stuff I can't think of right now. This is so cold. They're all super high value skills that can translate into a bunch of different jobs. Most of them you can do from home, infinitely scalable. It's almost like impossible to lose. Although it's quite possible that you can't see a thing right now. It's so steamy in here. When I initially picked my goal of once I hit half a million subscribers, I would finally get a Tesla. I literally picked it because I thought there was no chance that it would happen. A year and a half ago, maybe two years ago, just hit half a million subscribers. It makes me want to throw up when I think about like how many people that is individually hitting subscribe. Because if I was talking in front of like five of you in person, I would like be jittery and sick to my stomach. But however, this is totally fine. And I didn't like completely jump off the bandwagon. I'm doing this responsibly. I got a really good deal on it. I bought it used. I'll hopefully drive it for two years and then sell it for pretty much exactly what I paid for it because I got it at a good deal. So I'm still trying to be financially responsible with this, but I really just cannot say how grateful I am for everything that has come along with YouTube, for the relationships, for an audience of people who are into the exact same thing that I am into, who support me, who comment. I try to answer like every comment. I'm just so grateful for Meredith for, for supporting me when I was starting for two years, not knowing what I was doing, just struggling while working full time. I don't know what my next goal should be. So if you have any ideas, comment it and uh, use some of the links down below if you want to support me. I'll see you hopefully next week.